Okay, Cash Duck Bowcraft here. Um, just wanted to show you guys my uh, metal and bone working area that I have uh, set up here in my garage. Um, there's my bow working area, and I have a metal working area where all my uh, where I make my knives and uh, broadheads and everything. The noise that you hear in the background is the air conditioning system. Uh, it's pretty much like 100 degrees outside and it's probably 98 degrees in my garage so it's pretty hot um, uh, but I'm still working so anyway um, here's some uh, bone stuff that I'm making I'm making a bunch of uh, bone arrowheads uh, today I roughed them out and uh, cut out the basic shapes of them and uh, what I'm going to be doing today is, uh, well, if not today, maybe tomorrow or Tuesday, is um, making some bone uh, broadheads for some arrows. Uh, I'm also making a bone uh, knife uh, out of a spare piece of bone that I had left over. And um, when I get through with that, I'll uh, videotape it and um, post them on uh, YouTube or Facebook or something. Anyway, uh, here's my uh, belt sanders. Uh, I've also got another one over there that I use, um, but pretty much all of my bone work is done on the uh, on these uh, belts here. It really takes a toll on the uh, sanding belts. It wears them out uh, pretty fast. So I always make sure I have a bunch of them uh, uh, on the side to uh, replace when I need to. So. Uh, that's that. But what I'm videotaping today is actually uh, the sinew uh, that I'm going to do for this bow. Um, if you recall in the last uh, part, uh, we had processed the tendons into some sinew. And uh, what I'm doing now is uh, just uh, bundling up uh, some bundles. Uh, and uh, preparing them uh, to uh, lay on the bow here. What I'll do is, um, these actually came out kind of short. They're probably about four and a half inches long or so. Um, the, the sinew that I got was kind of short and, uh, I don't know, they just came out that way. Um, but anyway, so there you go. Uh, it looks like I'll have enough for at least two, um, two layers. And... Uh, when I get all of them bundled up, um, you know, I'll kind of measure and make sure that I've got enough uh, to go along the whole bow. And then um, what I'll do, I'll soak those in water, in warm water, get them really pliable and soft. And then uh, what I'll do, I'll prepare the glue. And then uh, once I get everything all set up to what I need to do, I will... Um, start uh, applying the sinew uh, to the back of the bow. Um, so there you go, we're going to do that. Usually when I put the sinew on, I, I string the bow backwards um, to hold it in reflex um, as the sinew dries. But uh, for this particular bow, I'm just going to lay it on and um, uh, just lay it on there and let it dry just like that. Um, uh, I don't really feel like stringing it backwards right now, but uh, I tried to string it backwards, but the, the string was too low over the back of the bow, so it wouldn't allow me to work uh, between the string and the bow. So um, I didn't want to uh, try to force it all the way back or try to string it back any further than, than I could because I didn't want to risk the, uh, risk the chance of uh, putting a crack in the belly. So we're just going to leave this bow the way it is and let the sinew dry on it uh, for the next uh, week or so, um, just the way it is. All right. So anyway, when I turn this uh, video back on, um, we'll hopefully be ready to uh, to actually start backing this bow.